Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight, we are going to be venturing back into the horrors of truck drivers. But, with a twist, we are going to be focusing on stories that only happen at truck stops. I'm sure many of them will leave you gasping. I hope you're ready, because it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This story is about my father, who has been a truck driver for over 30 years. He is currently in the hospital due to back problems. There might be a connection. Mind you, this story happened about 20 years ago. One night, as my father was trying to catch a few hours of sleep in the bed of his truck, before having to, kind of illegally, drive a few more hours than he was supposed to, due to time constraints and bad traffic all day, he heard little bumps from the outside, like a raccoon trying to get in a metal shed. So his first thought was simply, it's probably a raccoon. But then things turned a bit creepy. He started hearing more noises, and finally some mumbling from outside. Clearly no raccoon. But a couple of guys, maybe two or three. Fully convinced this wasn't just an animal, my father tried to get up, but simply couldn't. It was like he was mentally all there, but his muscles weren't responding. It wasn't anything like sleep paralysis, though. Turns out, those guys put little rubber tubes through the truck's little skylight, which was tilted open slightly for some fresh air while sleeping, and poured some kind of knockout gas, or something like that, into the truck's cabin. Barely conscious, he could just lay there and watch as two men entered the cabin after fiddling around with the locks for a few minutes. They took all they could find, both company and private, his phone, his wallet, and even his shoes. Something that I personally find most terrifying. One of the thieves was searching everything very thoroughly. He gave my dad a complete pat-down, pockets of pants and shirt, under his pillow. Basically, anywhere someone might be hiding something valuable. Personally, that would have freaked me out the most. And the most interesting part about this story is that he told me about it, as if it were just a thing you've got to go through when being a trucker. And this story in particular isn't too rare out there, he said. He also told me a ton of horror stories from other drivers. I was driving overnight in a very low populated area. Due to circumstances, I was seriously sleep deprived, driving on a poorly lit stretch of woods. My headlights started to cast shadows through the rails on the side of the road and started playing on the trees on either side. It looked and felt like I was driving across an ocean. And then the hallucination started. When you are seriously sleep deprived, you'll start to see shadows flickering across the edges of your field of vision. Shadowy figures started appearing in the water next to the road, swimming alongside me. They looked like monstrous mermaids jumping in and out. The Dutch roads are notorious for having very few truck stops that actually have space for a real truck. So I drove for another hour, taunted by these figures. The first stop I find, I pull into and ready myself for a nap. I wake up a couple of hours later and one of the figures was in the cab with me looking at me. I freeze terrified for my life. I couldn't move until I calmed down enough to start noticing 
that while it seemed to be moving and breathing, it doesn't seem to move that much. And that's when I realised it was my coat, slung across the seat. Panic subsided, and I used the adrenaline rush to drive the two more hours I had to go. On another occasion, it was less spooky but more creepy. The truck stop I had parked on was infested with lot lizards. I had already seen some of the less lizardy types get into trucks. I was reading a book when suddenly I hear my handle of the passenger door being pulled. It was locked, luckily. But that didn't stop the unseen puller to try and get it open. It stops for a second, and I suddenly feel the cab swing a bit, like someone was on a ladder. Up comes this horrible visage of rotting, missing teeth, with a balding head, and so much eyeliner, it could be called face liner. She minds giving me a blowjob, and I refuse. She jumps off, and I see her storming off, furious about something. Most of the other truckers were laughing at me. She was well known amongst the local truckers for her wiles. On another occasion, I was driving after being up for about 30 hours straight. Normally, I'd have pulled over, but I had to work the night shift, and it was bloody awful. I slammed on my brakes because I was positive I saw someone standing in the middle of the road. I couldn't count the number of deer I swore I saw coming towards me. I got turned around in the small, rural town I lived in my entire life. I couldn't tell if I was looking at a street light or oncoming cars. Sleep deprivation is no joke. Working nights, I go plenty of time without sleeping. Usually I just get some eye floaters and my eyes will go cross, fuzz out, and it's nearly impossible not to doze off for 30 seconds. I can handle that. But those shadow people spooked the hell out of me. I like to tell my friends lack of sleep is the cheapest drug. You literally go a little out of your mind when you don't get a good night's sleep. I am a truck driver. I had a hooker climb into my truck while I was sleeping. My truck's passenger side door wasn't locked as well as I'd thought. I'd been hit in a parking lot by another truck, and it bent the door a little. I tested the lock, and it seemed to lock and unlock fine. But that turned out to be wrong. It was around 1am, and I was sleeping, when I sort of vaguely heard my door open. So I was already starting to wake up. Then someone shook me by the shoulder. I jumped up and hit her in the face with my laptop. We got into this weird hair-pulling, slapping fight and physically pushed and kicked each other until I kicked her out of the passenger seat and out the door and onto the pavement. I stood there, half awake, blinking at her through the windshield. When she jumped up, flashed me her boobs, flipped me off, and ran away. And then, I did my best to try and go back to sleep. I woke up less than an hour later, with someone knocking on my door. It was the police. She called them, and told them she was my girlfriend, and that I had beaten her, and thrown her out at a truck stop. I believe they were getting ready to handcuff me, when a few drivers from the other trucks came over to explain that she'd been knocking on the truck doors all night, and was there most weekends either knocking on doors, trying to climb into unlocked trucks, or the like. The cops didn't really say anything else to me. They just handcuffed her and drove away with her in the back. Plot twist. I'm female, and look nothing like the stereotypical ideal of the manly female trucker. She looked like a greasy beach ball, 
with dead caterpillars for eyebrows. Also, I have been flashed innumerable times by men and women. I've seen a lot of wrecks and the bodies. Oh gosh, how they haunt me. I had someone throw a football from an overpass and bust my windshield once. I helped drag another truck driver out of his truck through his windshield after I watched it run off the road and catch fire. I watched a guy hit a buffalo once, and the truck and buffalo sort of exploded everywhere. I got stuck in the snow bobtail once, and a whole Amish family came out and pulled me out with horses. Then they gave me tons of food to take with me, because the women said I was too skinny. I knew a guy that had a pet goat, monkey, and parrot in the same truck too. So much weirdness out there. I heard that monkey beat the shit out of a dog with a baseball bat once. Freaky stuff. Back in 1995, I drove an 18-wheeler for a living for a short period of time. While I only travelled the highways for a little over a year, I had the pleasure most of the time, of meeting some very nice, interesting fellow truckers. I don't recall where I was when this tale was relayed to me, but I remember it was very cold and late, as I pulled into a small truck stop somewhere in the Midwest. I applied the rig's safety brakes, and left her running while I ducked inside for a shower and a bite to eat. So after a filling, greasy and hot meal, I lounged back, sipping some hot coffee, counting the miles in my head, and trying to do the math on my ETA to my drop site the following day. Satisfied, I could afford the time to rest a while. I lounged languidly in the booth, sipping my coffee, and barely listening to the light sound of some muzak flowing through the small, quiet truck stop, interrupted periodically by a noise from the kitchen or the waitress chatter with another customer. I began to doze sitting up, the warm air and heavy metal taking its toll after a day's long drive. As my eyelids fought gravity, a voice addressed me. Hey there. My eyes shot open to see a large, burly trucker in coveralls, wearing an old hat, that had seen so much use, its logo was unreadable. He had a thick beard, and kind eyes. His face had been weathered, perhaps by years of being on the road. A true veteran. Oh, hello. Sorry, I was... I began, as he held up a patient hand, indicating he understood and his face transferred the emotion of being sorry to have disturbed me. No, no, I understand. But if you don't mind some company, I haven't had a right proper conversation with a live person in three days, he said politely. But also his body language and demeanour seemed to leave me an out if I wasn't up for it. I was, so I motioned for him to settle in as I roused myself from a slumpered position. A little happy myself to have a conversation that wasn't on a CB radio. He manoeuvred his bulk somewhat awkwardly into the small booth, chuckling about the situation. I myself was no lean trim athlete, but this guy was big. Not weightlifter big, but a throwback to the 80s wrestler big. In fact, he kind of reminded me of Hillbilly Jim, the wrestler back in the day. He introduced himself as Jim and shook my hand. As we made small talk, I mostly listened, occasionally telling him where I was from and where I was heading, whom I drove for, the usual trucker small talk. He told me he was an owner-operator, his own boss, and drove a flatbed hauling tractor parts at the moment. He began to ask me how I was holding up, if I liked it. Really friendly conversation, 
Jim was honest, and what you saw is what you got. He seemed very enthused to have someone to talk to, and before we knew it, an hour had flown by. He started to make a gesture to leave, voicing that he didn't want to overstay his welcome, to which I waved away the comment. Actually, Jim, I'm in no hurry, and you aren't bothering me at all. I was kind of hoping to meet someone eventually that I could talk to, and get an idea of what I expected to be out here. Jim smiled, and seemed genuinely happy to hang out a bit longer. He chuckled and mentioned, I'm kind of glad you said that. I'm not sure I can get out of this booth at the moment. I laughed, and took his meaning. It was warm and cosy, despite the tight fit. He finished his coffee, and casually lifted his mug to the waitress, along with a patient smile, and leaned forward as much as his girth would allow. He snorted, and made himself comfortable and asked, You want to hear a true story, buddy? He paused as the waitress filled up his cup, and I shook my head politely, as he looked towards me. As soon as the waitress was satisfied, we were content. She moved on, and Jim leaned on his elbows, hovering his thick grey beard over his steaming mug. You gotta be careful out there, friend, he began. You see, a fellow like you driving for one of those big companies has too many rules. I raised an eyebrow. How so, Jim? I mean, yes, he was right, of course. There were a shit ton of rules, most with safety in mind. But I was curious where he was going with this. I had heard of truckers carrying illegal weights on the back roads, trying to avoid scales like up in Idaho, where an owner-operator of one's own rig got paid by the pound. So naturally, there were those that loaded the shit out of their trailers, and rolled deep, hoping the dot didn't pull them over, and shut them down with a hefty fine, and the profit gone. Jim was not talking about illegal weights, or cheating logbooks for extended driving purposes. He paused, looked down as if deciding how to begin. About ten years ago, I was hauling box trailers, like you are now. I was somewhere in Wisconsin, middle of nowhere. Again, Jim paused, but not for effect. I could tell he was reliving some deep shit, and I suddenly felt like I was violating his privacy. I felt awkward, but it passed as Jim continued. So, he began sipping again at the steaming caffeine. I'm getting tired, and it's about one or two in the morning. So I know it's about the time I have to pull her over and get some shut-eye. Jim continued, as I felt my drowsiness dimming. Well, as fate would have it, I see a sign for a Flying J truck stop. So I pull in, back her up, and leave her in idle. It was cold as a moose's tits out there, and I wasn't coming back to a freezing truck. He chuckled as we both looked outside at the freezing parking lot. Smiling, I nodded all too well how much I understood that. So, I gather up my shit, and roll my fat ass out on the truck, looking forward to a shower and some chow. He paused briefly. Now I got my bag slung over my shoulder, and I lower myself to the asphalt and head on in. After locking her up, still running of course, and I nodded for him to continue. Like I said earlier, there's laws and there's rules, being that we drive federal motor carriers. I sensed where Jim was going with this. Jim had been armed. A lot of owner-operators carried weapons. Some bring guns despite the federal law prohibiting it. However, company drivers like me seldom were, as we could lose our jobs for just having a gun in the vehicle. And that's just for starters. Jim grunts as he shifts in the booth. I eat, shower, you know the routine, and it's time to hit the rack. 
I crossed the tarmac-sized parking lot and headed back to my truck. He trails off, looking into his half-empty mug. Man, he exclaims in a whisper. I can remember that cold air on my wet head. Hell, even with my hat on, I couldn't get back home to the truck fast enough. I had my keys ready, unlocked the door, and popped the hatch. Mmm, that warm air hit me, and I thought nothing could feel that welcoming. And I was right. Jim looks me right in the eyes. I grab the rail balancing my bag on my shoulder, and hike a foot up to the first runner, and it happens. Jim makes a comic book-like noise, or sound effect, thwack, right in the bloody ankle. I mean instant damn pain, son. I immediately drop, or more or less crumple to the ground, stunned from the blow and the fall. My ankle is on fire, and if you've ever taken a shot from anything in the freezing cold, it hurts bad. He wasn't kidding. And now I'm hooked. Jim continues, his voice trembling just slightly. I admire his ability to contain himself, as he continues as what he tells me horrifies me. I'm on my back, and I look up to see this figure. This shadow crawling out from under my rig. At first I couldn't tell what I was looking at, and my ankle was numb, and on fire at the same time. I couldn't get up. I just couldn't. I was all bundled up, overweight, and now crippled after being struck and falling off my running rail. Shit, I muttered, my guts knotting in anticipation. Shit is right, Jim chide. So now I can make some sense out of what's happened. But there ain't no time, as this scrawny, wasted-looking fellow with a crowbar in his hand is scuttling out from under my rig towards me. Now I don't know what this guy's intentions are. Rob me? Kill me? Both? Steal my rig? Shit. All the above. He choked back some of the dark memory. This guy is crawling out from under my truck, and he's almost cleared the running board, which will give him a much better position of opportunity concerning my potential fate. It was in the look of his eyes. Madness. You know when you can tell someone is committed to whatever they're gonna do? Yeah. This guy with his wet stringy hair looked desperate and savage at the same time. And I have no doubt he was one or both. Christ, I sighed. What did you do, Jim? I asked, fully enthralled in his tale. As I was sinning across, from a living Jim, I already assumed he survived the encounter. But how? Well, I pulled out my .357 Magnum from my shower bag. Like I said, laws and rules are for some, and I shot him twice in the chest. I was terrified, Jim admitted. Freaking terrified, and in some serious shock. While I hit him both times, and needless to say, the encounter was over. Just like that, it seemed like it lasted forever, and at the same time, a few seconds. Hell, it doesn't really matter how long it took, but I finished what he started. Jim seemed sad, lost for a second. I sympathized with him, and empathized as well. He hated it. He wasn't bragging, and I was right. Jim's eyes watered a second or two, but being the tough trucker he was, he dried up just as quick and shook his head. I can't imagine how desperate or what the guy was thinking, but in the end it didn't matter. He was gone. Jim went on to tell me the Magnum reports alerted the truck stop and the police were called promptly, as well as an ambulance for Jim. The crowbar guy wouldn't be needing one. Yup. Spent three days in the hospital, with my life idling out there in some truck stop with two bullet holes in her. He laughed a little to ease the tension. Nah, they towed the bastard. 
took good care of her for me until I could get round again. But man, that's your home. And well, I had killed that stupid guy. That stupid, stupid bastard. Jim trailed off with a quizzical look on his face as he quickly reflected back to the night. The table lurched a little as Jim awkwardly shuffled to his feet, throwing a few ones on the table. Be careful out there, kid. Always be aware of your surroundings. All of them, he stressed. He tipped his hat, smiled, and he lumbered off. And I noticed for the first time the slight limp in his right leg. A member of our family was a trucker. My uncle used to drive a lot, and he always came back with the weirdest stories ever. While every family member knew his stories, there was one story he told and warned about, even to me when I was six. Moral of the story is to never stay during the night in the desert alone. It seems once he drove to Chile. He had a contract and the way there was okay. I made the travel myself in later life. It's beautiful. Whenever he was done, he usually spent a few bucks on booze. But this time, due to a family gathering, he wanted to be back as soon as possible. So instead of drinking in some bar, he decided to sleep a bit in the Atacama Desert. Well, it's a desert, and he had parked way outside the road and a few miles before the next village. He sleeps and wakes up on someone singing. He is confused and thinks it's the radio, but it's not on. Then the singing stops and sounds more like a scream of help. That's when he wants to get out and help, but he is still confused. He said he started the motor and the lights to see who was out there, and there was no one. He also did open the window and asked to yell what was going on. And right then when he decides to get out anyway, he catches a movement in the corner of where the lights end. It looked like a woman, but the face was pitch black. He freaked out and drove away, and didn't stop until he reached home. Whatever he saw or thought he saw, every time he told the story, his face went pale. Even my grandmother commented how he was usually a very jolly guy, but whatever happened in the Atacama Desert freaked him out. I was an owner-operator during the only time I ever got spooked while parked overnight. One of the few times I was actually sleeping and not driving during the night. I was heading down I-25 from Denver on my way back home, at the time, to California. I had a drop in Tucson along the way, hence why I was on that route to begin with. Somewhere near the Colorado and New Mexico state line, in the middle of nowhere, I get too sleepy to drive, so I pulled off the highway onto an off-ramp that was elevated and quiet. I made the executive decision that pulling onto the on-ramp instead would be more convenient in the morning when I wake up. Perfect place to do my 10 hour break. I got into the sleeper, tucked myself in, and stared out the window at the stars in the sky. It was almost pitch black outside since civilization was so far away, and it was a new moon, so the amount of stars you could see was insane. No light pollution, no moon, you can see everything up there. You feel at peace when looking at it. After a while, I finally began dozing off, until I heard a car pull up on the off-ramp outside. 
I looked at the passenger side mirror from my bed in the sleeper and saw the car stop at the very beginning of the on-ramp on the opposite side of the road. They turned off their lights and just sat there. I assumed whoever it was had the same idea as me, but I felt a little uneasy about it, mostly because I had a highly modified brand new pickup truck, a motorcycle trailer, and a tricked out Porsche 911 back there on my flatbed, all going to the same location. After maybe 15 minutes, I began dozing off again. Some time went by, and I finally began falling asleep. For a short amount of time, I was in and out of it. Once I was almost completely asleep, suddenly, I felt a really light punch to my head, a flash of white in my eyes, and heard a thud. Exactly what you experience when getting punched in the head. I jolted out of bed, swinging out of instinct, only to realise that there was nobody there. Suddenly I'm overcome with this fear that is growing exponentially by the second. This feeling suddenly overcomes me that I absolutely must leave right now, and that danger is imminent. I sat for maybe a couple of seconds before I jumped out of bed, breathing like I had just ran three miles, and jumped right into the driver's seat. The act of putting the clutch down, putting the shifter in gear and flipping my lights on, and turning the keys all happened in a flash. I hit the brake release valves on the dash, and started tugging on the brakes, which are still in the act of releasing. Upon launching my truck, like I'm some kind of NHRA hotshot, I looked in my driver's side mirror. The chicken lights running down the side of my trailer illuminated pretty much anything within 15 feet. I saw two guys walking up the side of my trailer, carrying what looked like maybe a shotgun or a steel pipe. It didn't look good, because the only thing illuminating them was amber-coloured lights. And also because I was busy rowing through gears like an Olympic boat team on cocaine. And my truck was a 13-speed, so there were plenty of gears to row through, even though I start off in fourth when light. I haul ass down the highway and kept my eye on the ramp in my passenger side mirror as I chugged on down the road. I didn't see a car come down the ramp after me. Either way, I wasn't stopping. In fact, I didn't stop until I got to Albuquerque and parked at a truck stop in town. The next day, I called my mum to let her know I was going to be in town later in the evening, since she lives in Phoenix. I casually brought up to her that I almost got hijacked last night. She asked what I had that would be worth hijacking a semi over, and she gave me the, well, that's your problem right there, bit, once I told her. I ended up not getting to Phoenix until the next morning thanks to the unloading process taking forever down in Tucson. My mum came and picked me up from the truck stop, and casually tells me in the car that on her way to her house, that she called some psychic lady about it. The psychic lady told my mum that a police officer was in the truck, and yelling at me to get out of there now. He was very frightened, according to the mystical afterlife lady. My mum asked what she meant by a police officer. She ended up describing my grandfather to a T, who retired from law enforcement after 47 years before he passed away. She said that there was another man in the truck who looked like a farmer, and she ended up describing my great-grandfather, who served in the Navy, as I did, during the Second World War, and ended up becoming 
an over-the-road trucker for 30 years since he got back from the Navy. The would-be thieves were apparently after something red or possibly orange. The Porsche on the very back of the trailer was red. So apparently, my grandfather and his father were in my truck trying to wake me up and warn me that I was about to be hijacked. I don't really believe that psychic medium stuff, but I'd be lying if I said I am at least on the fence about it these days. According to her, both my grandfather and great-grandfather have been keeping me safe out there since I first hopped into the truck. Whatever the case, I haven't been a trucker an incredibly long time, but there are some moments when I wonder how I didn't end up dead. In LA, there are two TA truck stops next to each other. One has a free lot, and the other lot, you have to pay to park, or fill up with at least 100 gallons of fuel. My company only pay the fuel from Pilot and Flying J, so instead, I decided to stay the night in the free lot. Problem was, that's where all the drama happened. Drug deals, lot lizards, you name it. At the time, you could just turn on your CB radio, leave it on channel 19, and have more action than a cops marathon on top of a few episodes of Law and Order SVU. Nevertheless, I needed to sleep. So as soon as I was done with dinner, I got a shower in, and then sat in my truck. Now, I like to hit the bunk early, so that I could be on the road before 6am, when traffic was still somewhat rational to get out of the city in one piece. That meant I would usually park anywhere from 2 to 4pm, while there were still plenty of slots to park in. What that meant was that I had a few hours to kill just sitting in the truck reading, or what have you. Usually, I'd have the CB on just for background noise. The usual stuff was there. Broke drivers offering to sell brand new computers for cash because they spent all their fuel money on gambling, drugs and women. You heard that a lot then, especially around casinos. Anyway, the additional stuff was happening too. Women cruising the lot looking for lonely drivers, calling out on the CB, or in my case, just coming up and knocking on the door of the truck. I ignored most of it. When the sun went close to the horizon, I got ready for bed. Usually, i just lock the doors and call it good. But this night was bad. Probably normal for the area. But when a dozen cop cars roll in with lights and sirens, and park in front of a random truck that is suddenly roaring to life, not a suspicious move at all, by the way, that's when the knocking on my doors got frantic. I could feel the cab rock, as someone kept trying to tug my doors open. Maybe the cops. Maybe someone trying to hide from the cops. I didn't look. The CB was exploding with noise. I risked a glance through the front window curtains and could not see any officers around my truck or by my door. That's when I decided to strap the doors closed. The way I did it, Freightliner trucks have massive fall through grab bars on the interior door panels. And like most other trucks, a full length hinge from the bottom of the door to the bottom of the window. I knew I could trust the hinge, but the lock? I grabbed one of my four inch wide load straps, used for securing cargo in the trailer, and looped it through both interior grab handles effectively locking both doors to each other. From the outside, you couldn't open either one if the locks failed. The drama lasted a couple of hours, 
I didn't actually lay down until the last cop car was gone. Usually, I would sleep in shorts and a t-shirt. But that night, I took off my belt, opened my pants, and took off my shoes. And that was it. I was out like a shot in the morning, got breakfast to go, and did my walk around inspection and hit the road. Lesson learned. I mentioned everything to one of the clerks in the store, and she said, Yeah, if you need a quiet night, go to the paid lot. We can't keep the scum out of here. I went to LA a few more times after that, but I always paid for my parking from then on, and it worked like a charm. I have two stories from my experiences while truck driving. So anyway, I was new to the business and had parked at a stop in Texas en route from one place to another. It was August. There was nothing unusual about this situation. I was in the middle of a parking lot with 70 odd other trucks. I woke up with a start, six hours later, to the truck shaking and rolling. Hellacious noise all around, and psychedelic light shows blasting me from every direction. It was a severe thunderstorm that I'd had no idea was coming. Wind, pounding rain, thunder, and lightning to beat hell. Being in a truck during a storm is closer to being in a tent than in a house. I'd never experienced it before, and even though I grew up with this kind of severe weather, I lay there in this tossing, heaving sensory party going. I didn't even know where I would go right now to get safe, if I had to. Hell, I didn't even know how to find out if this is severe or regular, or a tornado. I was really tired next morning, and let's just say I didn't manage to deliver my stuff on time. The second story. I parked for the night somewhere in southwest Michigan, on the way to Grand Rapids. Again, a truck stop full of trucks, shut down, and went to bed. I woke up, looking at one of the cabin lights which was on. I think I fell asleep with the lights on again. Genius. And then I froze. The light I'm looking at only comes on if you deliberately turn it on, which I never did, or if the door is open. Just then, I felt the slight roll of the cab that's the telltale sign whenever someone is climbing up. I wish I had some heroic Rambo shit I could claim I did, but I can't. I yelled. Now I can make myself heard in a very loud environment pretty easily. And this was the dead of night, and silent. I yelled, GET OUT! Loud enough to send Legion to the Gerasene pigs. There were frenzied scrambles, and the truck rocks some more. Then I hear a very small woman's voice say, I'm sorry, I got the wrong truck. Nothing from me from a second and then, Are you okay? I just said, Yeah, just get the hell out of here. Moral of the story, lock your doors. She was either another trucker or a prostitute. And it doesn't matter either way. Because she got the wrong truck. I have another story. I was in Puerto in West Memphis. I had dropped a loaded trailer and bobtailed to the truck stop and parked in bobtail parking at the Petro. I was pretty tired but hungry. So I went in, got a meal and walked out and opened the door to my truck and started climbing in. I looked up right into the face of a guy grinning at me. I was in the wrong truck. I had parked next to him. We both drove for the same mega carrier, so the trucks were identical. He had watched me go in and knew what was up. We both had a good laugh. 
and I went back to my truck and crashed. It was especially funny, since I told him about the female who got into my truck just a few weeks before. I was running a load of 12-inch paper rolls out of Washington, heading for Phoenix, and decide that because I'm tired and have a load, it would be a good idea to sleep. I forget the highway, but I come across an abandoned motel in the middle of nowhere. I pull off and quickly check the dirt for any surprises, like trucks swallowing potholes, glass and other things. Happy that the spot looks good, I park and just leave the marker lights on. Being winter, I don't need to idle and can just open the windows in the sleeper. Cool. Soon I'm in bed, fast asleep, and I find myself awake suddenly and can't figure out why. I lay there in the darkness when I hear it, a faint scraping, metal on metal. Slowly, I sit up and pull a shirt on and grab my 4D cell mag light. I hear the metal noise getting louder, but only slightly, opening the bunk curtains. I look out the window and see nothing out of the ordinary that can be seen from the lights of my truck. Sitting in the driver's seat, I turn the key to accessory and roll down the driver window. I can hear the noise, lighting of cigarettes and decide to have a look. Climbing out of the cab and turning on the mag light, I looked around and saw nothing, but could still hear noise. Walking along the truck, checking my lock and seal, and checking for vandalism of my truck and finding nothing on the other side, I hear the noise again, and turned around and see something skittering into the brush, thinking it was an animal. I walk around to the other side of my trailer. I hear the noise and send lights in the direction. I swear, chastisement of myself. The noise is a metal gate swinging lightly in the breeze. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's instalment of stories. I wanted to shake things up and do something a little bit different, so I hope it was to your amusement. I want to give a little shout out to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your pledges really make a world of difference and help by running and supporting the channel, so thank you. And if anyone here would like to become a patron, all you need to do is to click the link in the description. Patreon is basically just a monthly service where you can donate to your favourite creators for their creations, and it is entirely optional. Please feel no obligation whatsoever. If you did enjoy the video, I would seriously appreciate a like as well as a comment on your behalf. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the little bell icon. I do post every night to ensure that there are spooks waiting for you for when you go to sleep. And if there is a story that you would like to share, feel free to send it to my Reddit or my email to potentially have it featured in a future video. Just ensure that you include plenty of paragraphing, punctuation and description, as these are my three golden standards when evaluating the stories I pick to read. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.